بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this session we will continue with chapter 7.3 and we will go through an exercise from one of the final exam questions that is already posted for you in the, in the, in the lecture sessions. So the question it says, we have two parts. In the first one, it says out of 22 points, you have to write the definition of a class named task class that should include the private members. List as an array of type string to hold the names of the task. Count the current number of tasks in the array. Max size to the maximum size of the array. So we have three private members, the array, how many elements, which is represented by counts, and what is the maximum size, so what is the length of the array that is uh, uh, defined as max size. Additionally, you should have the following public methods. We should have a constructor with one parameter m of type integer. The constructor should initialize count to zero, set value of max size to be m, and create list as an array of size m. So basically, in the constructor, we need to initialize the private members. So we have to take a value m. This is to represent the maximum size of the array. So we have to say max size equal m. And because it's a new array, then we have to say count equal 0. And the array should be created by saying list equal new string and then between a bracket max size. So max size representing the length of the array. We need a method named add task that take a string t as a parameter. The method should add t to the end of the array if the array is not full. So we need a method. It will take string the t, and this t should be added to the array. And it should be added to the end of the array. And we have a condition that the array is not full. We know that the array is empty if count is 0. And the array will be full if count equal max size or array or count equal list dot length. So this is the condition of the full in the uh, add task. The last method, add method named search. Again, it will take a parameter t of type string. The method should return true if t exists in the list. Otherwise, it should return false. So we will take t as a string and we have to do a search in the array. If it is there, existing in the array, we have to return true. Otherwise, we have to return false. So let's put all of these into uh, practice. We will write the full coding. So we should have we should start with a class named task class. We should have list, count, and max size as private members. So this is the class, but we have we have public class, task class, and we should have private members. So we will have a private, three private members. And then the first one, we should have an array of a string, and it's called list. So the data type is a string. We should have a bracket, and the name of the array is list, and then a semicolon. Then we should have count to represent how many elements we have in the array. So this is, should be as integer count. And then finally, we should have max size to represent the maximum length of the array. And again, this is, will be of type integer. So these are the three private members. So we are done with these. So we are done with the private members. Now we will go with the constructor. So it says here you have to do a constructor. It should take parameter m of type integer. And what do we have to do? We have to say count equals zero. We have to say maximum size equal m. Create the array of size m. So constructor should be public. It should take the same name as the class. So we should call it task class. We will take one parameter m, and this should be integer. So we'll have to say integer m. 
open a bracket and then between the brackets we have to write the coding of the constructor. Always within the coding of the constructor we have to initialize all the private member. So I have to say list equal count equal max size equal. So here we have list equal count equal and max size equal. Now when it comes to list this is a new array so I'll have to say new and type a string between the brackets the size. Here the size should be m. So for example here if m is 10 the array should be of size 10. Count this is a new array so this, the count is 0 we have no element. Max size is the length of the array which is as m. So if m is 10 it means max size will be as Now this is done. A method named add task, we have to take a string t as parameter and we have to add t to the end of the array if the array is not full. So we have public, we have void, the name of the method is add task, and we have to take string t as a parameter. Now according to the question, the first thing I have to check is, is the array full or not? So I have to have an if condition, and we will have to say if count equal max size or we can write it in this way, if count equal, double equal, the name of the array list dot length, then in this case, it means the array is full. If count is 10 and max size is 10, it means we have no room to add any more elements. But if count is 0 or 1 or even 8 and the maximum size is 10, it means we still have some room to add more elements. If count equal max size, it means the array is full. So we will output a message. For example, we will say that this is a full array, so we cannot add more element. Else, if the array is not full, I have to add t to the end of the array. This is t should be added to the array. So the name of the array is list. I have to specify in which index we have to add t. So this is equal t. And because this is a new element, so I have to say count a plus a plus. So if we will just think about it in terms of idea. So I'm having list and assume I'm having elements and currently count as zero because my array is empty and the maximum size let's assume the maximum size is a three now the first condition we were talking we were saying go and check if count equal max size now count as 0 and max size is a 3, so they are not equal. So we will not output a message. Actually, we will go to the else part. Within the else part, it say go to the array at a specific location, and you have to add t, and then you have to increment the count by saying count a plus a plus. So if I have t, for example, as abc, this ABC, because it's the first time, it means I have to add it at location 0. And this location 0 is actually the value of count. So here between a bracket, I have to say count. So go to the array at location 0 and add T. So T will be added to this location and this is ABC. And sorry, the value of count will be incremented. So the value of count will be as, as 1. And similarly, whenever you need a new element, you will go to the count, you will use it as an index, and then you will have to increment count.
So the index here we have to say as, as count. So this is for adding the element. Now the last one we have to do is a method named search. Again, we have to take a parameter T of type string. We have to check, we have to return the true if T exists in the array, otherwise we have to return false. So it means the return type of this case is, is Boolean. So if I have my array as follow, Let's assume we have two elements in the array, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. So it means count as two. We have to take a parameter T of type string. So for example, let's assume T as A, B, C. The process we have to do is we have to search if this T actually exists in the array. What does it mean? It means we have to have a for loop from i equals 0, from integer i equals 0, i should be less than how many elements I have, which is in our case, I have two elements, which is represented by the variable count, and then i plus plus. So the first time we have i located at location 0, we will have to say, go and check if the array at location i, which is currently i is 0, so the array at location 0 is ABC, if it is having the same value as T, and our T in this case is ABC. Of course, we cannot use double equal for string, and that's why we have to replace it with dot equals, or dot equals ignore case. If you find it, if this is ABC, and T and ABC in location 0, then you have to stop and you have to return it true. So we will stop here by saying just return it true. And this is, will be the end of the for loop. And it will return it true to the main. Assume that what we are looking for is XYZ, which is the second element. So we will start again from 0. And we will say, go to location 0, is it the same as t? t now is actually x, y, z. And location 0, I have a, b, c. a, b, c and x, y, z, they are not equal. So we will move i to the second location. Here in the second location, it will say, go to location 1. List at location y, which is x, y, z. Is it the same as value x, y, z? Yes. It means we found t in location 1. So basically, we will return it true and we will just exit the method. Assume that the element you are looking for is not there at all in the array. So for example, assume you are looking for mw and mw is not there. So the way you will have to do it, you have to say return false. And because we are doing a search within the for loop, it means once you finish the for loop, then you can return false. So here we should return false in case the element is not found. So let's apply it. From the beginning, we will say start from i equals 0. So the first time i 0. 0 is at less than count, which is 2, true. So you will execute the F condition. And the F condition it says list of I, which is list of 0, is it the same as T? List of 0 A, B, C, is it the same as T? It's not. So we will not do the return, and we will continue with the for loop. Within the for loop, increment I, and I should be less than count. So I should be moving to the second location. Is it less than count? True. So execute the F. Within the F, we are saying go to list at current I, and current I is 1. List of 1 is it the same as T. List of 1 is X, Y, Z, and T is MW. They are not equal. So we will not do the return, and we will continue with the for loop. 
within the for loop increment i, i will be as 2. 2 is it less than 2 false, which means we finish the for loop and we have to go to the end of the for loop. So it means so it means we finish this block and we will just execute the last statement which is return false which means you have to exit your method and you return false to the main. Remember one of the common mistake that do not use f and else. So do not use here f. If you find the element then return it true, else return false. This will, this will never give you the correct answer because assume I'm having the following case. Assume that I'm looking for x, y, z. So from the beginning it will say go and check the f condition. Go at location 0 is it equal to t. So this is location 0 a, b, c. Is it equal to the t? It's not. So it will not execute the f, it will go to the else. And the else it say return false. So it will return false to the main program. But actually x, y, z exists in the second location. And the problem is because if you say f and else, it means you will not go through all the elements. What you will do, you will check only the first element. If it is there, it will return true. If it is not, it will return false. So always remember this is a, a common mistake so try to avoid it when you write your assessment and always remember that you should have the for loop to do the search. Once you are done then you can have the return false at the end. So let's write the method here. So we have public. Boolean is the return type. The name of the method is search. It will take parameter string t. And then we have to have a for loop starting from i equals 0, i less than count. So go and check if the parameter t equal list of i. But remember, we cannot use the dot equal, the, uh, so the double equal. So I will say dot equals. And if you need, you can use ignore case. If this is the case, you can say return true. If you finish your for loop, so this is the end of the for loop. Then you can say return false. And here we can have this is the closing bracket of our of our class. So at the beginning, we have three private members, the array, the count and max size. We have the constructor to initialize the array, to create the array, initialize count and max size. We have a method to add a string t to the end of the array. We have another method that will return true if the element is found in the array, otherwise it will return false. Let's just compile it to make sure we have no errors. So we have our coding ready to be used. Of course, if you run it, you will not have any output because we don't have the main method. And if we go back to the question, they have the second, the second section of the question, which says, uh, write another program. And in the main method, you have to do the following. Create an object. The name of the object is my task and it should be of size max size 10 and 
Then you have to add homework one and homework two to the object. And then you have to go and use the search method to find if homework exists in your, in your task. So we will start by following. I have to create an object, my task. And this is, should be of the same class we created before, which and the name of the class is task class. So here we have to say task class, my class, equal new task class. And I have to send a parameter. So according to the question, they say you should send the value 10 for max size. So you will send 10. So actually it will create an object. The name of the object is my task. And this my task, I should have all the private members. So I should have the array, count, and max size. So we will have the array, we have count, and we have max size. So if we go back to our coding, so this is what will happen. It will call the constructor. It will create the array of size M, which is 10. It will initialize count to 0, and it will initialize max size to M, which is 10. So here the array will be created of size 10, so from 0 up to index 9. Count will be 0, and max size will be M, which is 10 in this case. Then according to the question, you have to add homework 1 and homework 2 to to the new object you created. So you have to say, go to my task, this is the object we created, so this is the object, dot, which method I have to use. We have actually two methods. We have a method called add task. We have another method called search. Add task, it, it should take a parameter, string t, to add it to the end of the array. Search, it will take a parameter t to do a search. We need to add, so I will call add task. So I will say add task. And between the brackets, we will have the double quotation and we will say homework one. According to the coding we have, if you call this method add task, the first thing it will check if count equal max size. Currently count as zero, max size as 10, so they are not equal. So we will go to the else part and we will say list at location 0 equal t and count to plus to plus. So we will say go to the list at location 0, it should equal t, so this is t which is homework 1 and count to plus to plus, so count will be as 1. Similarly, you have to say my task dot add task and then homework 2. So again, it will go and check max count and max size. Are they equal? They are not. So in this case, go to location 1, which is the value of count, and you have to add homework 2, and then you have to increment count. Finally, they say you have to check if homework 1 exists in the task, and you have to output a message. So I have to call the method search. So we will say, I have to say my task dot search. The value I will send, I will search for homework one. So this will call the method search. If we go back and check the coding of the search, it will do the search. If the element is there, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So we can have the return type saved in R. And R should be of type boolean. So if the element is there, R will have the value true. If it is not there, then R will have the value false. Then you can check the value of R. If R equals true, or you can say only if R, then we have to say system.out.print line. Yes, the element is found. Else we can say system.out.print line, the element actually is not found. 
So let's put this one into a complete program. We will compile it and run it. And we can see how the elements are added and how the search is done. So basically, we will copy the same thing here in the slide into a program. So this is another program. And we have the main method. And we will start by creating the object. So we will have to say, this is the name of the class. So we have to make sure that we are copying the same name, even with a small letter and capital letter. The name of the object is my task. And between the brackets, the size is 10. Now we have to do the addition. So this will add two elements. And then we will do the search. So I will create a variable r. And we will use the method search. And then we will check the value of r. And we can output a message. So we have our coding ready and we can do the run. So here it output a message found because we created the object. We added two elements, homework and homework two. And when we did a search about homework one, it is found. Let's assume I will do a search of homework 11. It will output a message not found because this element is not in our array. So we have first the class where we have an array within the class. And we have all the constructor and methods. And then we have the main method in which we wrote uh, a small, uh, we, we created an object, we added two elements. And then we check if the element exists or not. Let's assume I have, for example, here only three elements or only two elements in the array. And we will try to add three elements. So we will just need to check if the adding of the three elements will work or not. It should not be. So here, when we try to add homework one and two, it works. But when I try to add homework three, it out with a message saying array is full because we have specified the length is two. So that's why we managed to add only number one and two. And when we try to find homework 11, it's not there. So that's why it says not found. 